Okay, so the big news is uh, the massive misreporting across the entire industry of this Microsoft Secure Boot oh. Golden Key. Oh. That did not happen. Oh. Not in any way, shape, what? or form. It was complete, completely wrongly reported. Threat Post said Microsoft mistakenly leaked secure boot key. Nine to five Mac says poof or proof Apple was right to fight the FBI. Ars Technica, Microsoft secure boot firmware snafu leaks golden key. None of that is true. Complete misreporting. I, in my notes, I said what? the report on this has been 1,000 percent, meaning very, very inflammatory and incorrect. Okay, so just to just to because uh, uh, I've been reporting it that way. We don't have the sophistication to know this is wrong. My understanding was there is a secure boot. In most cases, by the way, you can turn it off. Otherwise, I wouldn't be able to put Linux on all these machines that I put Linux on. You just disable it in the, in the startup BIOS. But um, on some Microsoft machines, like the Windows RT tablet, uh, you can't disable it. And, and apparently, uh, there's and phones a, and phones. That's right. But it, but uh, so as as is often the case, there's a there's a like with the CSS, the DVD encryption and and the Blu-ray encryption. There's a key, a master key, right? And Microsoft, it said, please correct us, published this master key inadvertently in in a, in a source code posting on on github all of that's not true no <laughs> oh my god um so uh okay so the hackers who figured this out are absolutely talented and they did a terrific job of cleverly uncovering an exploit not to mention of publishing that exploit with fine synthesizer midi music <laughs> and an animated golden well, key and now see this is an example of what does drive me crazy with like <laughs> it's hard trying, to read this you have to yes. cut and paste it frankly is the, the only good way news to read is this. you can do a control a yeah. <laughs> and it will mark the entire thing yeah. copy and then drop it in a notepad immediately then close that page uh lord knows what it's doing to your processor uh and, and then at, at length so those are actually hashes. That's not the key. Those ah, are hashes okay. of of individual bits of secure boot. Two hundred fifty six bit. Uh, yeah. SHA two hundred fifty six so, bit hashes. So so here's here's what happened. Uh, what they did was uncover a mistake. Uh, and again, I want to make it clear: these guys are good. Uh, they did a great job. Unfortunately. They mixed a little of their own personal agenda in with reality, trying to draw a conclusion that was unwarranted. Um, so, but again, great reverse engineering and, and cleverness, just not what, essentially, they use the term golden key. And, and because their write-up was itself very confusing and dense. I had to just like go back and forth and make yeah. notes and and leave a trail of crumbs and, and like, say, okay, wait a minute now. And like basically decode what they published because it's it was really, you know, I mean, these guys are not technical authors. They're, they're hackers. Um, so um, – what this actually was, was an implementation design error in the handling of boot permission policies, which can be used to trick older versions of the UEFI secure boot manager using some newer, some components of an update. So the so-called Redstone version of Windows 10, which is uh, 1607, version 1607. The, the anniversary update. The, an the current. The we know it yeah. as the anniversary update. It added some new technology. Then the concept of supplemental secure boot policies, uh, which can, for example, be used for test signing development code. There's, and of course... That could also be malicious rootkits and so forth. So, so there is a there, there's a there, there's a fundamental problem with secure boot. You just referred to it earlier, and that is, what if I want to run Linux? 
That is, you know, the, as we and we did a whole podcast on the UEFI secure boot technology and how it how it starts from a known uh, uh, unmodifiable piece of integrity on the motherboard, which cannot be changed, and and carefully carefully brings the system up by verifying the signature of everything that it loads before turning control over to it. And if you do that perfectly, what you end up with is a system in a known state. What you also end up with is a system that you can't change. So 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 the, the, so there there's a there's a tension in this approach with people who for whatever reason want to change and for for like for non-malicious purposes like developers needing to develop uh, kernel drivers, boot time drivers, uh, you know, and, and, and developers. So with this anniversary update, Microsoft created an extension to the boot policies known as supplemental policies, which, which have weakened verification but which the that same new boot manager understands so there was no problem with that these guys realized that what that what that did though was create a vulnerability because these new supplemental policies with with a lower degree of verification could be used to fool older boot managers which didn't know to specifically check for them. So they, they look like regular policies. The updated boot manager is aware of them. And, and so, so this is a little bit sort of like that weird problem we have with, like with people in doing fresh installs of Windows 7 where Windows Update has changed so that you can't use Windows Update to add the updates to Windows 7 until you manually update Windows Update so that it then knows how to read the data from Microsoft's changed Windows Update servers. Similarly, Microsoft enhanced their the, the, the flexibility of Secure Boot in a way that if you're using sort of synchronized pieces, everything's fine. But they just missed the fact, and these guys caught it, that you could take the, the, pol the new policy parts from the update and use it to fool the pre-update boot manager. That's all that is. There's no key involved. So, uh, so what they wrote, and you can see where the press got this, they wrote, you can see the irony also the irony in that MS themselves provided us several nice golden keys, as the FBI would say, um, for us to use for that purpose. So uh. they were using the term referring to the FBI's use or, or, or request for some way of unlocking the system. But the press picked it up incorrectly. Like there was a key. Right. Thinking that it was actually a key. Of course, that rotating, floating was. golden key in the demo scene might have had something to do with it. But. Oh, I mean, yes. <laughs> and so, well, and, 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 and here's a little bit of their own agenda. So they said about the FBI, yeah. are you reading this? Right. If you are, then this is a perfect real world example about why your idea of backdooring crypto systems with a secure golden key is very bad. Well, no, that's not what this is at all. But... Then, then they continue, smarter people than me have been telling this to you for so long, it seems you have your fingers in your ears. You seriously don't understand still? Microsoft implemented a secure golden key system. Uh, no, they didn't. And the golden keys got released from MS own stupidity. Well, no, they didn't. Now, what happens if you tell everyone to make a secure golden key system? Hopefully, you can add two plus two. Anyway, enough about that little rant. Wanted to add that to a write-up ever since this stuff was found. So, you know, these guys have an agenda, 
And this was a platform for allowing them to express themselves. Yeah. I mean, we share their agenda, but it doesn't have anything to do with this. No, not wow. at all. Everybody, including me, including everybody I ever talked to, misunderstood this. Thank you for setting the record straight. I wish you would call these everybody and tell them. Because uh, I haven't seen one article saying, no, no, that's not it. I guess it is well, kind of hard to understand. Think frankly. of how fabulous this would be if it were true. I, know. And I mean, it's not true. Yeah. So... You know, and and now the problem is I don't know how Microsoft mitigates this. I mean, this is a I don't mean to un downplay this. This is a big mistake because this does allow non-updated boot managers pre-anniversary update to be fooled with some pieces that are from the anniversary update. So so this was I mean, this is absolutely a mistake. But what it wasn't was a was the disclosure of a golden key. So anyway, I I, I <laughs> and believe me, I, I don't blame the press for not digging in because it, it was hard to determine that that's what this was. Uh, and then when I thought I understood it, then I read it again several times to make sure I was right. It's like okay, yeah, that's that's what these guys did, which is nice work, but. You know, the whole golden key is an absolute red herring referring to the notion of backdoor systems. But this isn't that. This was a mistake. Right. And Microsoft so, has put out some fixes. The uh, ROS and Slipstream, the hackers who discovered it, said those don't do anything. They say in their write-up, now I'd like to get some clarification on this too, that Microsoft really can't fix it because it would break these older systems. Is that the my case? Point. That's my point. Okay. It's like there. I mean, we have an enduring problem. Right. What this would, the only thing you could do would be, for or Microsoft could do would be to release an a so securely release an update to the boot manager that they could do if they brought if, if, that is for people who didn't for whatever reason didn't want to update to the anniversary edition of Windows 10. Microsoft should at least, and I imagine they will. I think we can we can foresee this. There will be an update to all Windows systems that support secure boot. They could be updated to to for awareness of this new supplemental policy system, and that would then shut everything down. But that, of course, requires action from you know the entire you know, the entire industry of, of users. So it's a big problem, but it, it can be fixed. But it does require that the existing boot managers be taught about these mm -hmm. these changes. And, it, you know, it just slipped by, it's just slipped underneath Microsoft's radar. And it doesn't, it doesn't affect, I mean, like main line of business stuff for Microsoft either. So there's not a huge incentive to fix it. You, you point out correctly, it's, it's not about installing lim Linux on it. It's that a rootkit or something else could use it to modify right. the operating well, system. Well, and in, in... Oh. What? A yabba dabba do? <laughs> wait, wait a minute. Did you have a precognition that you were going to get a yabba dabba do? <laughs> no. Uh, the, <laughs> Does what the hard is... drive make a unique eh, eh, right before it plays yabba dabba do? Uh, I have a real-time monitor, uh, two GRC servers. Oh, oh. So that gave me the first indication. <laughs> oh, then funny. GRC servers sends a text message to my phone, which is tied with iMessage to all the other devices. That's so funny. So, That's so funny. So I did hear it first. And actually, that was a corporate purchase. That was nice. for Yabba Dabba Do. So yeah, whoever yabba, that yabba, was, yabba, thank yabba. you very much. If you're listening, I have Probably I somebody it. listening to this saying, Steve Gibson is the only guy that got this whole story right in the whole world. And uh, thank you, Steve. Here, I'm going to buy a corporate license. That is awesome. So so, so uh, I just want to clarify, because I'm going to, I, yep. I mean, I now have the obligation to, in every place where we said this, including Windows Weekly tomorrow and on Twitter on Sunday, to say we got it wrong. This doesn't do that. This isn't a golden key. This just involves using uh, soft uh, uh, bits of pieces of the Redstone update to uh, modify the boot, secure boot in older uh, versions of Windows, like Windows RT Correct. and Windows the, So, yes, the, the supplemental policy pieces that were added, that, that technology added to Redstone 
is a is a means of permitting developers to to install test code uh, ah, essentially to, right. to to right. to 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 allow secure boot to to believe that their test code uh, for development uh, is purposes. valid yeah yeah okay. but 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 and but there are things missing some some device ID pieces and other pieces that just that aren't necessary there but the updated secure boot knows about that which is what makes that safe yet what these guys discovered is you could take the those supplemental policies and they would work on older versions of secure boot across the board allowing anybody to use that to install their code in in you know basically to completely subvert any pre um, anniversary update secure boot technology Got it. okay well i will fix that and uh so i know, did again you know, I, it's not that i didn't try to read the original post oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and i did but i don't have the skills you do to uh, parse it and it, i didn't understand a word so not that well, it was it very well written. Around, yeah, you know, it they had a lot of fun doing it, but yeah. like the text jumps around, yeah. so it's like, okay, wait a minute, wait a minute, what, what? Yeah. And so I, I copied it to a, to a text well, file. Well, lesson learned when it comes to highly technical subjects, even tech, the tech press, uh, often gets it wrong. Again, this you couldn't have dangled a bigger right. golden carrot. Right. We all wanted to believe it. Press. Right. Oh yes, it's. I mean, it would. It's a fantastic story. Yeah. It's just not true, yeah. unfortunately. Yeah.